वेलकम नमस्ते नमस्कार वेलकम बैक टू जल प्रयाग आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू ऑन ए न्यूमरिकल इफ यू रिमेम्बर इन द लास्ट एपिसोड वी हैड डन ए न्यूमरिकल बेस्ड ऑन एस एफ बी एम फॉर अ बीम विच वॉज एक्चुअली लाइट बीम सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू चेंज द न्यूमरिकल आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गिव यू ए लाइट बीम i am going to give you a homogeneous beam in this question let us see how to solve uh, the approach is slightly different if you look at any questions uh, the broadly if you categorize into different categories uh, you can have a light beam question or a homogeneous beam question so let us see how to solve that for those people who have uh, who are looking at this uh, video for the first time or you have come now i suggest please watch uh, the three videos before which i have done on the same topic so that you can understand what is the concept why i am doing something in a particular manner so if you jump directly to this question it may not sound uh, easy for you to grasp even though it is a very simple question i have given you a very very simple question i am giving you a homogeneous beam uh, it is weighing around uh, 15 newtons body weight 10 meters long simply supported and uh, a concentrated load is placed uh, at exactly the center of uh, your beam which is again 15 newtons that is what is there and i am asking you to uh, calculate and uh, draw to scale the sfbm for the beam just a rough picture uh, before i start off i'm going to show you a more comprehensive picture in the next slide if you uh, look at this is simply supported 10 meters long and there is a concentrated load placed exactly at the center always before i start anything for sfbm my first job is to find the reactions because reactions are important without reactions i can't proceed further what is the meaning of homogeneous beam the body weight is uniformly distributed but uh, when uniformly distributed we know from our uh, ships calculation whenever something is uniformly distributed i can consider the body weight to be acting at the center of gravity so for me center of gravity is exactly midway 5 meters so this is what is your body weight including this i have a concentrated load which is 15 newtons so this is concentrated load so the total action what i have in this question is 100 newtons and it's very evident that the reactions for the simply supported concept has to be exactly the same total reaction should be 100 newtons again now uh, please look at this question it is homogeneous so that means center of gravity is exactly at the center of the beam your load concentrated is also placed exactly at the center so without even thinking i can directly give you the reaction x and y as 15 newton and 15 newton each but i will still show you that equation which we have been doing we have, we are done an equation in the last uh, video i'm going to show you that equation it was based on reaction moments and action moments is that okay so uh, how do i do it i always start from the left end uh, i consider there is a half perpendicular then i go by actions on one side and reactions on one side on the left i was written reactions because they are positive so you can see your x ray has got zero lever but yanki which is actually 100 minus x has got 10 meters of lever that is what i have written let us look at the actions the body weight from left hand has got 5 meter into 50 the concentrated load also has got 5 meter into 50 if you resolve this i will still get 50 into 50 50 and 50 which is uh, 50 plus 50 once the reactions are calculated i should change my approach little bit differently because this is not a uh, light beam this is a, a homogeneous beam so what i am going to do is the weight i have to show is uniformly distributed between the frames so that means i am going to distribute the weights between the frames and i will call each uh, frame distance is 1 meter long so i am going to name them alpha to finally kilo so you have 11 letters and 10 meters and each frame distance is 1 meter you should realize again 
when I say homogeneous body, this 15 newtons is divided into the 10 meters. So that means each meter will have 5 newtons. Now, where will this 5 newton act? It will neither act from alpha nor act from bravo. It will be exactly at the center of gravity of that meter. Why? Because it is again homogeneous. So this I'm going to depict in the next picture as individual arrows. Please see this. So I got 10 arrows. Each one is 5 Newton. That means total body weight is 50 Newton. And you should realize I've removed the thick brown color arrow I had shown at the total center of your beam for reaction calculations. Why? That was supposed to be used only for reaction calculation. When you come to individual frames, I should distribute the weight. This is how you do a homogeneous problem. Let us start off SF. I'm not going to go and explain what is your SF. We all know what is SF from the previous modules. So let us start off SF, okay? Anywhere I have a point load, I have already told you that I will have two values to talk about because it is suddenly jumping from a value to a different value. So that means left of A, the force is zero, but exactly at A, it jumps to 50 which means alpha should be always written with two values, which is called 0 to 50. This is how you write. Okay. Now we know what is alpha. Let us go for bravo. You stand at bravo. At bravo, there is no force. But you please look at the left of bravo. I have plus 50 and minus 5. Okay. I have that violet color line, which is going up, reaction line. And I have a hollow brown color line which is going down, which is your minus 5. So I will write Bravo is 45. Charlie, please see this. Again, at Charlie, nothing but left what you have. I have plus 50, then I have minus 5 and one more minus 5. So let us go to delta. Again, I have a plus 50 on the left side, but then I have three forces going down, which is minus 15, so 35. So if I go on like this, you will see the forces will keep on changing and echo is 30. Let us come to Foxtrot. Please remember Foxtrot is a place again where I have a point load. So whenever I have a point load, I will have two values. So what is to the left of Foxtrot? If you see it is plus 50 and the body weight is minus 25 only to the left side of Foxtrot. Then what happens at Foxtrot? At Foxtrot, I have a concentrated load called minus 50. So that means I'll have to do algebraic sum. So I will be writing two values. I'm going to show you in the next slide. One is plus 25, which is to the left. And exactly at Foxtrot, it is plus 25 minus 50. So that means minus 25. So I'll have to write two values called plus 25 and minus 25. It is a big jump. It is jumping 50 newtons if you look at it. Plus 25 to minus 25 is a jump of 50 newtons in the negative direction, which is down. Go to golf. I have written two ways. One of the way where I have written minus 25 minus 5 is simple. If you look at the last value of Foxtrot, it was minus 25. And after that minus 25, all I have is I have one more minus 5 going down. That is why I have written minus 25 minus 5, which is minus 30. If you cannot grasp this, let us go traditional method. You standard golf, you please look all the way up to alpha. You have a 50 Newton going upwards as a reaction at alpha. Then you have minus 50 going downwards, which is at Foxtrot. Then you look at the body weight. I have six arrows, which is minus 30. This also gives you the same answer. So hotel also very similar plus 50, minus 50, and body weight is minus 35. So final algebraic sum is minus 35. So on like this, minus 40, minus 45. Let us look at kilo. Again, left of kilo, please see left of kilo. It is plus 50 at alpha, minus 50 at your Foxtrot for the concentrated load. And then you have the whole 50 Newtons of the body weight also. So that means left of kilo is minus 50. Then what happens exactly at kilo? This minus 50 should be done algebraic sum with plus 50 at kilo. 
So that means this is the answer. So if I when I write, I will write two values minus 50 to 0. And if I tabulate this, you will see this is the table. It very clearly and evidently tells that this beam is in static equilibrium. It started with 0, ended with 0. Everything is perfectly fine. Now let us go to BM. BM again, definition we have already seen. We have done a problem also. Let us start off with the question. I will stand at alpha. I have a force called a plus 50 newtons, but there is a lever zero. Let me go to Bravo. From Bravo, I have the same 50 newton force going up with a distance of one meter, which is lever. Then again, I have a small five newton going down, but that five newton is acting at the center between alpha and Bravo because it is homogeneous. So I will take 0.5. And answer is 47.5. Let us look at Charlie now. Again from Charlie, I got 2 meters to alpha for that 15 newtons going upwards. So 15 to 2. Then I have a force between alpha and bravo, which is actually 1.5 meter from Charlie. And it is 5 newtons. Then again, I have one more force between bravo and Charlie, which is again 5 newtons, but half a meter. When you do this calculation, you will get 90. This is a traditional method but is very long so when i come to delta i'm going to show you a shortcut let us do a shortcut you should realize from delta to alpha you please see i have totally three meters and this beam which is three meters the brown color beam which is three meters is homogeneous so you can consider that whole three arrows which is going downwards to be acting from the center of gravity of this three meters, which is one and a half meter. So that is why, please look at this calculation right now. First, at delta, I will do the first calculation. From delta to alpha, it is three meters, and I've got a 50 Newton acting upwards, so 15 to three. But what will I do with the body weight? Body weight, I will take all the three forces which are going down, which is 15 Newton, five plus five plus five, and the total center of gravity of this 3 meters is 1.5 meter. So that is why when I do this algebraic sum, I get a value 127.5. Let us go to echo in the same principle. I am giving you a shortcut method. Please look at the shortcut method. Shortcut method is up to alpha, I got 4 meters. So 50 into 4 going upwards. But up to alpha, I got a length of 4 meters, which is homogeneous, so my center of gravity is 2 meters. But how many forces are there? There are 5 forces acting downwards. Each of them is 5. That is why 20 into 2. So I've got an answer. Let me go on Foxtrot. I'll again prove that Foxtrot with a shortcut method with a diagram. From Foxtrot, alpha is 5 meters long. Homogeneous means that center of gravity is 2.5 meters away from Foxtrot. So this I will use for the body weight. Let us see what I what I use for the uh, 50 Newton, which is left side at alpha, which is going upwards. 50 into 5. Okay. Then the body weight, I have totally 5 forces, so 25 Newtons. Homogeneous, center of gravity is 2.5 meters from Foxtrot. Please remember, at Foxtrot, I have a force called 50 Newtons going with a concentrated load, but there is no lever. So you will get a value called 187.5. I have highlighted 187.5. Why? Because this is the peak value of the BM. Okay. So let us go for golf. Similarly, I have 50 newtons of reaction, which is at alpha and totally I have 6 meters. I have the concentrator load, which is 50 newtons and I have 1 meter distance. But please look at the body weight. Body weight I have totally 6 meters, center of gravity is 3 meter, and I have 30 newtons of force because 6 into 5 is 30. I have five, four, 6 forces going down. So I get a value called 160. Similarly, hotel, very similar. I have 7 meters into 50. The same 7 meters has got center of gravity as 3.5 meters for the body weight, and I have 7 forces, so 35. But your uh, 50 newtons, which is at the concentrator load, now it has got 2 meters now. So answer is 127. India similarly is 
90. And let us look at Juliet. Juliet is 47.5. Let us come to Kilo. You please see Kilo again. From Kilo, the first 50 Newton, which is at alpha, is totally 10 meters. So that is a 15 into 10. The whole body weight now is included because it is 50 Newton. Center of gravity of the body weight is exactly 5 meters, so 50 into 5. Then I have a concentrated load, which is also 50 into 5 meters from kilo. I have a final reaction at kilo, which is going upwards 15 Newtons, which has got no lever at kilo. So that is why 15 to 0. So if you finally average, you get your algebraic sum, it becomes 0. So that means I have solved the BM also. So please see, this is the BM. These are the values for BM. And exactly at Foxtrot, I peaked. So that is a peak value. Now I'm going to put this in a graph. Baseline should be same. Let me start with the SF. SF, I'm going to give only plus 50 and minus 50 as a reference for scale because all the values were between them. But if you remember, if you go back, you know at alpha, my value jumped from 0 to plus 50. After that, it slowly kept on falling by 5 Newton. So I'm going to show you with these marks. It kept on falling slowly at 5 Newtons. It reached plus 25. It jumped 50 Newtons down because of concentrated load. So that means end result was minus 25. And after that, you would have seen that again, it started increasing in a negative direction by 5 each. This was the one. It reached a peak called minus 50. Then immediately, it jumped back to 0. So this is a graph for your SF. Let us superimpose BM also in the same thing. I'm going to make one more scale. And this scale is 0 to 50, 100, 150, and 200. My maximum, if you remember, it was coming around 187 or something. So I need only this. My dots will be approximate looking at this. But if you do with a proper scale, you will get a better graph. And uh, you will realize this change of BM, the rate of change was not constant. It slowly went on. You will see it kept on decreasing, reached 187.5 and then started falling. So that is why it will not be a straight line. It will be a curved line. So I'm going to plot these values approximately. It will reach a peak and it will come down. And when you plot it, you will see it will be slowly curving. It will curve here, come back, and then reach. So this is your BM. Okay. So in exam, you are supposed to display your SFBM curve in only one uh, baseline. And please choose two different scales. You can use one with pencil and one with pen. And once you put your dots, please connect it and you will get the answer. So this was a question where I changed the numerical from light beam to homogeneous beam. Hope uh, this will uh, get your doubts regarding both the methods clarified. Uh, please solve a couple of problems yourself. You will understand how to do it. But these are the two most basic questions. If you can understand this, you can always go a little bit ahead. Uh, keep watching Jal Prayag. Until then, uh, Vanakam, Namaste, Namaskar. And uh, at the same time, uh, best uh, wishes or seasonal uh, greetings for your Diwali. And uh, I would say Diwali should come by. And uh, Diwali Nalwaltikal also. Hope to catch you soon.